to the Mind of Basketball Podcast, also known as MOB Podcast. I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast, where we recap, break down, and analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. How are you this Friday afternoon, Ja? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, I'm, you're, I'm tired regardless, so I may want to say that. I'm just going to say I'm good. Well, I'm tired as well, but it is Friday, so that's the good news, right? Yeah, I, it, sh- I, I, it better be. Well, as of everyone else, I hope we're having a good day. I hope everyone will have a good day. Like I said, it is Friday, so get through the day, and then the weekend comes. And, of course, a big weekend this is for America. <laughs> so, you know, get through the day, and then the weekend is just right. Just um, right in a few hours. But special as, weekend. For- what is that? It's a special weekend for you, man. It's really well for everyone. Yeah, Not just me. Yeah, it is. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But uh, enough of that. Let's talk about the basketball. Let's talk about the games that happened last night. Two primetime games that happened along with a few other games around the association. So let's start off with the rematch from last year's Western Conference Finals, which was, of course, the Denver Nuggets and the Los Angeles Lakers. And basically, this game was really entertaining in the beginning. Uh, Bron got off to a hot, hot start, and of course, he did pass Wilt Chamberlain to be third all time in field goals made. So, that's another milestone by LeBron, of course, adding to his legacy and his greatness. I swear, this is staff for everything. All right, go on. Field goals that's been like just field goals, I know, but like, still, I don't think all right, I understand that, but that's not big, that's not that big of a, a crazy stat. Advanced I, stat. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But still, go on. You don't like Will Chamberlain. Uh, <laughs> I love um, Will. Yeah, like I said, LeBron got off to a hard, hot start, and he played well throughout the entire game. Finished with triple double. Dennis Schroeder played well for them. Um, and even though they played well, the Nuggets played well in the beginning as well. They had a double digit lead at one point in the first half. They had the lead at halftime, but um, towards the end of that third quarter, the Lakers do that thing in which they just turn up the heat and turn their defense into offense, and the offense comes off fast break points, and they're just gone, ending the third quarter with a 15-0 run. Yeah. 15-0 run, took the lead, and by the end, and then at the fourth quarter, they were up by double digits, and they just kept pouring it on, pouring it on, pouring it on. LeBron, Taylor, Taylor Horton Tucker was great for them coming off the bench. Um, they played tremendous defense on Jokic throughout the entire game. Uh, yeah. He was really struggling offensively. He couldn't really do much um, in terms of scoring the ball. Yeah. He, he did set up his teammates a lot. He did get rebounds and extended his streak as, as – um, 21 straight double doubles to start off the season, but everybody don't know. And that was the only per- other person to start off the season, 20, 20, 21 straight double doubles, was Bill Ra- Bill Walton, Hall of Famer, Portland Trailblazers of the 96 97 series, 97 season, I believe. But um, 76 77. What you said? 76 77. Guess what I said? Sound like you said 96 97, but I could be wrong. Sorry. 1976 77. I heard I heard I heard something different. I'm sorry. You good, you good. But yeah, um, but despite that, he didn't get the win and his team was struggling. They were and they turned the ball over because of Lakers defense. And as I said, they turned their defense into offense, and that's how they were able to win this game and pick up this this big win against this Nuggets team. Well, yeah, um, you said it all right there. Um, the, the it was a good battle in the beginning. Um, the the Nuggets went on a big lead, but went on a big on a big lead in that first half, and like you know, but just like what happened in the Western Conference Finals of last year, also happened tonight. Um, the the, the Nuggets looked like they had an opportunity to take this game from the beginning, and then. It looked like the 21st century of the Showtime Lakers just came alive. You know, like, you know, flip the switch and that, oh, you know, defense turned into offense, transition points, second chance points, um, out hustling, 
having more heart defensively and like just showing strides offensively. And as a result, the Lakers were able to just like, you know, basically show some, um, and I, you know how we always talk about it, third quarter dominance, right? They was basically able to show some second half destruction by having that kind of dominance within that aspect of the game. And it just took the nuggets out of rhythm because it went from a point where their lead squandered to the fact that they couldn't even get off a shot at all. They couldn't even make shots that much. They like, it got to a point where they, they had like a drought in terms of scoring. And then I, I don't remember which specific moment, but I know it was probably towards like, you know, the end of the third, that's where they got their buckets. And then they got a little bit of buckets in the fourth. And, but that mm -hmm. from that point on, it was over. It was all Lakers. The Lakers basically looked like as if they had like a 30 point lead at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And towards the end of that third quarter and the start of the fourth quarter, they held the Nuggets oh to zero points and they were shot. It was 0 for 9 from the field in five minutes of play. That just shows you just the greatness of this Lakers defense. And when yeah. they got it going and when they flip that switch and turn that defense into fast break buckets, yeah, you can't, and, you can't really stop them. And it's crazy because the point differential from how the teams were in the first half compared to how it was in the second half was just crazy. They, they were, the Nuggets had a more of a point lead in the first half, of course, compared to the Lakers, but it was just only by like, probably like by like 10 points. And when you look at the second half, the Lakers blew the Nuggets out the water. They were, uh, they had like a 40 point difference mm -hmm. in, um, between what was scored, whether it was in the paint or in the, in the mid range area or in the, or around the three point. Yep. Yep. Uh, a great, amazing win by the Lakers. Nuggets held to 93 points. First time this season, they've been held to under a hundred points. And of course, nobody else could do it besides the defending champions. So great win by the Lakers, tough loss by the Nuggets. But all right, down, well, I guess up to the earlier primetime game that happened earlier in the night, which was the Mavericks and the Warriors and kind of a similar story in this game as well. Third quarter dominance, uh, this time, the Warriors had the third quarter dominance, almost reminiscent of the old Warriors and their third quarter dominance when they were just able to flip the switch. But before that competitive game, um, Luca had it going, Steph had it going early. Yeah. Um, Oubre had it going and had it going for the rest of the night, but we can get to that <laughs> in a little bit. Um, and then, like I said, third quarter hit, then the Warriors became the Warriors. Um, and surprisingly, this was a Warriors team that their tallest, they didn't have anybody that was over 6'7". <laughs> mm -hmm. The tallest man on their team was 6'7". That's Draymond. Because of the injury, James Wiseman, I believe. Um, Kevin Looney didn't play. Yeah. So, and yet somehow, they was just able to take over this game with ease. A three-point shooting, the inside scoring, it was every time a layup 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 and you want to know why it's because of the well-oiled machine of the offense of this not offense the system that steve kerr has with that golden state team that he has been using for 21 so for like six years now mm -hmm. for six years now basically that that well-oiled machine that says spacing shooting and when it's time to attack and along with the defensive end how all those click together when you have plays like a Stephen Curry. The thing is, the only thing is, is that that's not that's not it for them right now is the fact that Klay Thompson is not playing. That's the only thing. Outside of that, this this Warrior system, even though it has new faces, new players, and everything, it's still the same system. It just takes time to adjust to, and as a result, you've seen it throughout this game. Um. Um, they was talking about it. Kelly Oubre is starting to find his footing within this system as, as he got to, like, you know, learn about it, know about it, get about it. Of course, he still needs more adjusting because, of course, he's not that good of a shooter. But, yeah, it's taking time still, and he showed it with this game. But, like, let's talk about it. Draymond Green, Draymond Green doing what Draymond Green does. Great playmaker. He was the... Career he, high fit in assist. Mm -hmm. The team. He, 
Yep, he was facilitating. He was get. He was um making the right reads, making the right decisions, everything. And that's what this Golden State team was doing, just passing the ball so well to a point that they kept passing until the right shot was found open, creating their own shot, getting inside, hitting threes, just everything that this system is supposed to be about. And of course, when you're playing it against a team that has no that knows and no such thing about defense at all then obviously they can't even guard the small ball. So, of course, they're going to take advantage of that. Oh, yeah, speaking of the Dallas Mavericks defense, the Alice Mavericks defense, uh, yeah, it's just so – it was so terrible in that second half. So hard to watch. I mean, they couldn't guard nobody. And I mean nobody, especially Kelly Oubre, who had a career high, 40 points. And you know he was hot because he's been struggling from deep all year. But last night, he went 7 for 10 from three-point line. That's how you know he just had it going. It was just one of those nights for him. And, hey, this, out of, of all teams to, to have this night against, <laughs> who else? It feels like it's the Mavericks, the Nets, and the Wizards. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but unlike the Mavericks, I mean, unlike the, um, the Nets, the Mavericks don't have that, you know, those, those, you know, superstars. They have, yeah. they have a superstar. Then they have a and uh, all star in yeah, Porzingis, yeah. and he had a good game last night. But the defense, when you don't have that level of talent, and also you shoot a lot of threes like they do, yeah. it's just it's not going to do good because then you shoot those threes, and they have to go in. Exactly, they have to go in. You have to make most of them. Because of that system, I thought that's what I say. Rick Carlisle, Rick Carlisle needs to figure out a better system for them. He needs to work around that. Their defense is terrible. When your defense is terrible, you can't just chuck up threes. Because when you chuck up threes, then you get those. Um, then you get those long rebounds in which the rebounds, yep. yeah, yep. and the other team can get those, and then they're on the break already. That the ball's already at half court once they get the ball. Yeah, and it also shows that. You don't have a strategy or a plan set in place if you just end up the fact of just going with the fact of just chucking up threes. I was like, people won't read that. It's like, uh-oh, he's panicking. He has nothing else in his game plan to do. So then you're asked out. You're asked out at that point, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm really disappointed in how the Mavericks have been playing this entire season. Very disappointed how they played last night. Once again, terrible, terrible terrible defense giving up 147 points <laughs> is it really is disgusting in a blowout loss to this Warriors team but a great win by the Warriors even though Kelly Oubre dropped 40 and it didn't feel like he was just dominating he felt like it was a whole team thing yeah like everybody had it going like you said Draymond Curry um Wiggins the bench mm-hmm. like this is just a great great night for the Warriors and good win by them yeah, and Sayonara Dallas. Alice. Alice. For now on, they're Alice. Yeah, they're going to be called Alice until they can play some actual defense. <laughs> McGuire shaking his head in disgust. All right. Three other games had happened um, from last night. Should you want to talk about one of them? Um. All I got to say is I'm going to continue to say it regardless. I don't care if they make the playoffs or not, but this Houston Rockets team is just fun to watch. You just fun hate James Harden. Oh, well, yeah. I guess they're not championship ready or they're not, they're not ready to win yet. So, like, you know, but he yet. He was wrong. But yet. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. Let's not say he was wrong. He shouldn't have said that, but he wasn't wrong. Okay. They probably not going to win a chip. But to say that this that you can't take that this play, team can't yeah. win, I, I, I see your point. And you sh- I'm not saying he to he should have said that. By all means, it was, it was your teammates. It's supposed to be your brotherhood. It's supposed to be your family. You know all that. You in the locker room with them. You know, like that's out of line. You don't say that, and that's why that's why you had that feeling towards him. Yeah, but he wasn't wrong. <laughs> but he wasn't. Keep, no, he keep right. going. Compared to other teams, he wasn't. But. That's the reason why he needs to win the chip this season. Um, but as I was saying, this, Talk about this, this Rockets, Rockets team now. This Rockets team, this Rockets team is just all around fun, well balanced offensively and it's most especially defensively. Um, when you got a leader and playmaker in John Wall, 
things should just make the game so much easier. And then as a result, you've seen it. Eric Gordon had it going. Christian Wood had it going. Jason Tate. All these guys from three to the tack in the rim. Athleticism. Everything was just going in so well for this whole team. And like they... And don't get me wrong, again, we know the Grizzlies to be for a grit and grind, but yet they were down by double digits for most of the game. For most of the game, they were down by double digits. And let's be honest, the Grizzlies couldn't really make a run at any point. And at that point, it was just all it was just all Houston from that point on. And you really, again, you really like what's going on down down there in in in, in the in the state of Texas. Like, you know what I mean? Like you know, um, Silas, Coach Silas has something has something brewing with this team. So, good win. Yes, that was a good win by the Rockets. Even though Rick Christian Wood did go down with an injury, uh, put up the footage of that injury. It looked like he might have sprained his ankle. Hopefully, that's just a sprained ankle and nothing else uh, more serious. But you know, he's been having a breakout year. He's been really productive for them. The Rockets team really needed him, um, or really needs him. So hopefully he's fine. You know, praise up for him. We don't want any serious, serious injuries from him or anybody in the league. So hopefully he gets well. Uh, all right. Other two games that happened. Well, one, uh, I'll talk about Jazz and the Hawks real quickly. Um, Trey Young didn't play. So this was just easy pickings for the Jazz team. Easy, easy pickings. Pretty, pretty big, comfortable win. You know, beat the Hawks by 20. Nothing really serious to talk about there. Um, but the Blazers and the 76ers played. And similar to the Hawks, you know, Damian Lillard didn't play because of injury. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. didn't play. Um, New York is still out. CJ McCollum is still out. So pretty much this was easy for the 76ers to come in and win this game if they thought that the game ended in the first half. Uh because even though the 76ers didn't have Ben Simmons, you would think that, I mean, the Blazers missing four key players and two of their best players. So easy, right? Oh, no. Uh, they lost to Gary Trent Jr. and 36-year-old Melo. But nonetheless, um, someone who was playing great was Embiid at 25 in the second quarter, finished with, I believe, what, 30, um, 32? 30, I know he finished with 31 in the first 30, half. 30, 31 in the first half, finished 37 in the game. So he was dominating. But to come out like this and lose against this team, this Blazers team, with no star power on their end, yeah. and none, and most of their key players out, I've, you, you have the best record in the East. You're supposed to be the best team. You're trying to be the best team in the league. You have an MVP candidate on your team. And, yes, Ben Simmons is out, but – you need Ben Simmons to be a Damian lillard list Blazers team? A Damian lillard list CJ McCollum list no Nurkish. <laughs> Nurkish list Like, it, that was a disappointing loss by the 76ers. I mean, they just got outgunned. They couldn't defend. The Blazers just had it going offensively. That chip, that chip on their shoulders, yeah. So, yeah. A great win by the Blazers, however. But a, a really disappointing one by the seven, a loss by the 76ers. Yeah. Uh, all right. I guess shall we go into predictions now? Yes, yes, we should. All right. So now it's predict time for tonight's set of games and our predictions. So we're we'll rapid fire, John. You know how we do. Let's go. All right. Pelicans or the Pacers? Pelicans. The Pacers. Bulls or the Magic? Bulls. Bulls as well. The first primetime game that we'll be talking about of the doubleheader on ESPN features the Toronto Raptors and the Nets. Of course, that is a rematch from last year's first round oh, playoffs. The, the, who versus the Nets? Who versus the Nets? The Toronto Raptors. Jurassic Park? Oh, no. I'm going with Brooklyn all the way. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Brooklyn as well. Unless Fred Lee can drop 60. Then maybe I might I might go with Toronto, but not Brooklyn. Uh, no but is Mile P better turn extra extra spicy. Go, you're gonna do like ten spin moves. <laughs> Bucks or the Cavs? Bucks. Uh, Bucks. The Jazz or the Hornets? Jazz. Jazz. The Wizards or the Heat? Heat trying to bounce back from that loss against the Wizards a couple of nights ago. Um, uh, Heat. 
The Wizards got lucky. <laughs> the Heat. I got the Heat. The Timberwolves are the Thunder. Um, Thunder. Thunder. The Pistons are the Suns. 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 And lastly, the last primetime game that we'll be discussing of the doubleheader features the Boston Celtics up against the other L.A. team, the Los Angeles Clippers. Who you got? I go with the Clippers with this one. I feel like Celtics struggling with injuries, so I can agree with you on that. I got the Clippers. All right. I think it's time to wrap things up. And now, with that being said, with the wrapping things up and all that out the way, all-star voting first round for fan votes and starters have been announced. Pull it up. Uh, and interesting to say that for anyone who watched basketball, the top three for each are pretty much, you know. Accurate, yeah. Yeah, on. pretty much accurate. Uh, the Western Conference front court top vote getters were, of course, LeBron, Jokic, and Kawhi followed by Anthony Davis, who was fourth. I do believe Paul George should have been higher than he was. He was fifth with yeah. only 500, over 500,000. AD had 1 million. I believe yeah. Paul George has been having a phenomenal season. You can make an argument that he's having a better season than Kawhi has. Yes, yes, you can make an argument. And that's the reason why I say, in my opinion, he should be higher than Kawhi, but, or in that area. But. And, that, and that's that's not a bad take. Uh, the Eastern Conference front court, or actually, no, still saying the West. The guards for the West features top three Stephen Curry leading them, followed by Luca and Damian Lillard, third. Uh, I also think Damian Lillard possibly you can make the case that he could be a starter. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, you could make the case. Okay, you could make the case, but if I'm looking at that from beginning of the season till now, individually. Luca has been consistent with great offensive play over time, in which Dame had certain games in the beginning in which he struggled to get on a roll. But when he did find his footing, of course, he took off. But I say it's debatable or who should be in that place, though, Luca or Dame. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, right behind Dame was Ja, like 700,000 votes behind. Um, not true, Ja. Ja Morant. Um, I believe the Diamond Mitchell should have had a lot more votes than he had. He was fifth with 236,000 votes. Um, he's been leading the Jazz. He's been having a phenomenal season. I uh, understand it's not just not him with the Jazz because they have won games without him. But I believe he should have been he should have been around that, you know, 600, 700,000 votes. You know, some of those votes that Clay Thompson got could have went to Donovan Mitchell. But, you know, I guess why not? Um, I don't know what's wrong with fans, man. I swear I don't know what's wrong with fans. Yeah, I don't I don't know why he got any votes. You know, he hasn't played a game. He has stepped on the court. Well, I guess the Magruder didn't I knew he's got knew he's gonna say something about that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that kind of like you know sparked people's feelings to say, oh, Clay's here. Oh, man, fans, y'all kill me. But not for Easter Conference front court, Kevin Durant leading them, followed by Giannis. Followed by Embiid. Um, I don't have a problem with this. Embiid probably should be might should be higher than he is in terms of vote getting. But I mean, he's if it stays like this, he's going to be a starter. So yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I don't know why Jimmy Butler has as many votes as he had. He's barely played <laughs> any games this season. Uh, I believe Sabonis and Julius Randle, who was seventh and eighth on the list, as you see. Should have gotten a lot more votes because they've both been balling out. And no, I'm not saying that because I'm a Knicks fan. If you watch the games, Julius Randle putting up 20, 22, 11, and 6 a night. Yeah. So I think he's proved that he should be um, getting that type of recognition. Sabonis, so we've been talking about him all year. He's yeah. just been dominant, double double machine. He's, yeah. he's going to give you 24 and, thir- and 12 a night. So yeah, just tune into the small market in the end. And of course, you're going to hear about him all the time. Yeah. Um, that's for the front court of the Eastern Conference. As for the guards, Bradley Beal leading them, followed by Kyrie Irving, followed by James Harden. I really believe that Jalen Brown should have gotten a lot more votes than he did. Yes, a yes. lot more votes. Jalen Brown possibly should be a starter. Yeah. Well, uh, look, at Bradley Beal is a obviously no-brainer. 
whoever feels like somebody should be over Bradley Bill, you must be out your mind. But um, but Jalen Brown, yeah, Jalen Brown, he deserves to be over Kyrie and, and Harden right now. I know, I guess, because those two players are not only are more popular players, I guess, and have been more established and along with the fact that they're in the New York media, how they probably get more shine and things like that. But come on now, we're not going to just excuse Jay. We're not going to just excuse that when you, if you, you guys should be watching what Jalen Brown has been doing this season. The things that he's been doing this season, even with things going on with Tatum not being able to play and Kemba being out for parts of the uh, parts of the season and stuff and how he has like basically offensively carried this Celtics team to how they are now, he's supposed to be in that starting lineup or he's supposed yep. to be getting more votes than those two guys. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Um, I also, I mean, he's bottom three right behind Jalen. You can make K. Zach Levine, Trey Young, and Colin Sexton all having great seasons. Yeah. Um, man, a lot of people not really going to talk about. Hopefully, I would like to see it. At least two out of three make the all-star team. You know, at least two out of three. Why did Derrick Rose get any votes? I don't know. But hey, uh all love for Derrick Rose. I mean, he's the most one of the most loved players in the league, but come on now. He shouldn't got any votes. Last year, last year would have been a good decision. Yeah, he yeah. he could have made the all-star team last year, but this year, I mean he's dealing with injuries and he hasn't got as much playing time. Still don't know why Clay Thompson got any votes. And the more I look at it, the more I just get upset. <laughs> <sighs> But yeah, those are the first round of the All Star starters voting, of course, by the fans. Um, with that out of the way, anything else? Um, not anything else with the All Star game. But um, it was a question I was going to ask you, but nah, forget it. Are you sure? Yeah, I could save it for another time. Actually, you know what? Okay, just quickly. Then. Um, okay, so Maybe? I watched. Huh. <laughs> Nothing, nothing. Keep on. Um, I watched the um this episode right um of the No Chill podcast, and they brought up something. No Chill, Gilbert Arenas. Gilbert Arenas, and it was an episode of D Wade. They was talking about something. Do you feel like this is out of all the times that we, of course, there's certain things that we can't mention because we was too young to even remember. But do you feel like this is the most complete LeBron that we have seen? in terms of his game and the facets of it and how he thinks about it and the way he has developed his game over time? The most complete LeBron. I, that is, that, that's, that's too hard of a question for me to ask in the span of time. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You see, that's the reason you see, I want, you see. Yeah. We're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this. Come yeah, back. let's come back to that. I think LeBron is – it's amazing how he's been able to do this at this this level yeah. for so long in this 18th year of his season, of um of his career. Came into the league at 18. <laughs> like, of course, the rules in the NBA and all the, like, contact and stuff has helped him. But even without that, like, his conditioning – and all the things he do to keep his body in that same top tier shape is is ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, I think that discussion is best saved for more time later on. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching today's pod. Oh, by the way, make sure you tune into tomorrow and Sunday's podcast because those will be early uploads. Tomorrow's games. Um. Saturday's games, yeah, Saturday's games, yeah. there will be an early game, so that's why we have to do early upload. And Sundays, all the games will be early because, obviously, Super yeah. Bowl, and they will get crushed in the rating. So, yeah, make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast, 11 o'clock, same thing with Sunday's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Also, follow IG down in the description below. And once again, I am Evan. I'm Ja. And this is the Minor Basketball Podcast.